I had no idea how insane this idea actually was until... Hello? What up? Are you able to tell me all of the craziest parts about Mr. Beast Burger? I'm all yours, hit me. It was the most ambitious project ever put to market by a YouTuber to launch 300 online fast food restaurants simultaneously with about as much cooking experience as a chef on their first day of a new apprenticeship. I've never ran a restaurant before. Nobody knew what the eventual outcome might have been. On the devastating side, Jimmy's 300 Mr. Beast Burger locations might have gone down in a blaze of glory, leaving him as laughing stock amongst 300 restaurant owners and potentially millions of fans. You know, I thought it would just be a big spike and then it just slowly died. Alternatively, on the other end of the spectrum, his idea had the potential to redefine what it meant to be a YouTuber, removing such from the category of a person who makes videos, moving it to the category of certified tycoon. Jimmy didn't only want this project to succeed, he almost needed it to succeed. The stakes were higher than ever, so it only made sense that in the six months leading up to the launch, Jimmy and the team wanted to make the idea absolutely perfect. Probably like half a year before I dropped that video, it, it was in the works. The biggest thing was really like figuring out the menu. In true Mr. Beast fashion, planning for the project started with a bang. And to make sure that the product was of the absolute highest quality, the team began to seek out those with the most experience in the burger making game. So we were like, you know, flying um, Chandler and the boys out to like this uh, world class chef in LA and, and he was cooking up stuff. And after a period of a couple of months, the menu was pretty much ready to go. And while having to come up with a full menu from scratch was somewhat of a challenge, it really paled in comparison to the next two challenges. Trying to convince hundreds of existing restaurants to distribute the product while simultaneously promoting it in a way that wouldn't make it a one-hit wonder followed by a slow, painful death. No one knew how well this would go. It was a coin flip back then, you know what I mean? Mr. Beast was a YouTuber. He wasn't a restauranteer. So he partnered up with Virtual Dining Concepts, or VDC for short, who began to line up as many restaurants as possible while Jimmy and the Mr. Beast team began to quietly work on the notorious promotional video. However, However, this promotional video itself would turn out to be yet another hurdle in the launch of Mr. Beast Burger. After lining up what was assumably a pretty basic fast food restaurant to serve his free burgers from, Mr. Beast realized that they probably needed a slightly more advanced location. There's probably going to be miles of cars. Like, we need a restaurant with a field beside it. Ultimately delaying the project even further. However, after approximately six months, with the menu refined to perfection, 300 restaurants agreeing to sell Jimmy's Burgers, and an entire physical restaurant revamp to promote the product, Mr. Beast Burger was ready to launch. On the 20th of December 2020, Mr. Beast would upload the promotional video titled I Opened a Restaurant That Pays You To Eat At It. Jimmy's concerns for the traffic problem would be completely justified after the line grew to over 20 miles long, despite the fact that Mr. Beast never even publicly promoted the restaurant. I never publicly shared this address. That is literally just people seeing the billboard out front. When considering how much Mr. Beast had spent on a 10 minute and 38 second promotional piece of content. Who's a typical Mr. Beast video? On average, they're spending like four or 500 grand. That's around the range where that one was. The idea behind the video was absolutely insane. However, you wouldn't discover the true insanity of the idea until you ventured over to Mr. Beast's Twitter. In addition to the insane promotional video, Mr. Beast had simultaneously made one of the most jaw-dropping tweets ever posted by a YouTuber, stating, I just launched 300 restaurants nationwide. Just go on your favorite delivery app and order a Mr. Beast burger. We've been working on this forever and I'm so excited, officially launching Mr. Beast burger into the public. This tweet was simply another 29 words statement posted to the internet like any other. However, in actuality, it was way more than that. It was a portal through to a land of success or failure and a judgment of Mr. Beast's business idea and entrepreneurial ability. Additionally, this tweet represented vulnerability with regards to his reputation amongst other creators. How would the YouTube community interpret such an extravagant expansion into the real world? Would it be met with support, appreciation, disdain, envy, jealousy? On top of this, did Mr. Beast even have a big enough audience for the idea to be successful in the mainstream? Maybe like 10 percent of my audience actually live near a beast burger at most if we're being generous there was a prominent fear surrounding how mr beast burger might have shifted jimmy's reputation however the fear would turn out to be completely unjustified it was trending number one on twitter when i announced it everyone was talking about it I, i'm very grateful mr beast's unprecedented leap of faith led to an insane amount of respect and support from numerous other creators you are literally showing the world that us creators are way more than just youtubers thank you for laying the foundation for the rest of us to walk on 
Keep going, brother. You'll always have my support. In the universe of YouTuber slash entrepreneurs, Mr. Beast stands alone. I'm in awe at the absolute size of this dub. Mr. Beast Burger is better than McDonald's. Twitter was loving the idea so much that the servers began to crash, stating the app doesn't seem to be working, which was promptly fixed by Jimmy and the team, stating, try again, the servers crashed, but we upgraded them. However, it wasn't only Twitter that was loving the idea. Over on YouTube, the hype surrounding Mr. Beast's new product was running rampant. I'm very grateful. Tons of YouTubers made videos uh, revert reviewing the menu and anyone who made a video on Beast Burger, I love you. We saw professional eaters such as Matt Stoney demolish the entire menu and receive over 20 million views for doing so, while notable food reviewers such as the Report of the Week reviewed the product positively to an audience of well over 2 million. It's a pretty good burger for what it is. I can't complain. I think you'll enjoy it. You know, it's like a no frills burger. Overall, the launch was insanely successful with only a few minor hiccups. But now the real challenge was about to begin, actually running the restaurants. And with 300 different locations launched simultaneously, this was bound to come with its own set of problems. I saw a few people complaining on social media. They were saying that there were some issues with the meat being uh, undercooked, which is just a legitimate concern I want to bring up. With thousands and thousands of burgers being ordered through Mr. Beast's app, it was almost certain that a small percentage will be made to a below average standard. With literally tens of thousands of orders in the first few hours, there was a little bit of quality assurance issues, um, which is typical with any new restaurant. Twitter began to do what Twitter does best, complain. Mine was a little underdone. Inevitably, examples of both undercooked and overcooked items began to come forward across various different social media platforms. Additionally, in the beginning, many claimed that their food had become cold by the time it had been delivered, a problem that Mr. Beast and the team have since fixed. We shrunk the delivery radius uh, in our Beast Burger app, and we noticed that when we shrunk it, the amount of people complaining about cold food dropped dramatically. However, many customers still weren't happy, and those who seemingly just wanted to see Mr. Beast's project go up in flames went to Keemstar with the goal of exposing Mr. Beast. However, Keemstar wasn't having any of it. Some people are trying to get me to expose Mr. Beast burgers for late delivery, food being cold, orders being wrong. Um, no. Have you people ever ordered food before? They always get it wrong. Not always, but you know what I mean. Something wrong with your order does not mean expose. You gotta remember that these 300 locations had to switch to a new menu overnight to pull this off. It's not gonna be perfect. And delivery services is not even the same company as Mr. Beast Burger. So late food isn't even Mr. Beast's fault. Just saying it's not an I was scammed thing. The large majority shared a similar opinion. Even if it was cold or messed up, you can't expect him to personally be hand making and delivering at every location. It's not his fault it was messed up. Imagine someone doing something new and cool. People expect things to go off without a hitch. There will always be problems. Nothing goes off perfect. I still think Mr. Beast did great with this. It's not Mr. Beast's fault though. He ain't making the burgers. Mr. Beast respectfully still took responsibility, tweeting, I'll be the first to admit we're not perfect. An overwhelming majority of people are happy with their orders, but yeah. Some people had problems and I'll gladly refund them and do what I have to make it right. Right. Also claiming that the business is always striving to make every order as flawless as possible. But every day we're, we're working to, to get the quality assurance higher and to just make sure, you know, literally as many deliveries as possible are perfect. But it's not like the Twitter complaints stopped there. There was one more issue which a minority of individuals seemed to get upset about. He partnered with already established functioning restaurants who now have to cook his food along with their own. He isn't helping the workers. This is truly taking advantage. It's not even a real restaurant. You just decided to take over already established places with a ghost kitchen, essentially f***ing over all the workers who make no money from these orders. Absolutely horrendous. However, this opinion couldn't be further from the truth. And if anything, simply gave Mr. Beast Burger an opportunity to display the good being done with his new business. The restaurants are happy. They get to keep, obviously, a majority of the revenue. So it's generating a lot of extra cash for these restaurants. And it's not like they're obligated to do it. If the restaurants weren't happy, they would stop. You know what I mean? A Dallas-based Italian restaurant stated that their business was booming since since they were given the opportunity to sell Mr. Beast Burger, and had sometimes been selling $7,000 worth of burgers in a single day, often saving restaurants that were about to go broke during the deepest points in the pandemic. And there were literally restaurants that like started serving Beast Burgers, and because of that extra revenue, right, that allowed them to keep their doors open during the pandemic. The restaurants were satisfied, the customers were satisfied, even Mr. Beast and the team were satisfied. However, they needed to embark on a new challenge, expanding the business. We started with 300, we saw it work, we saw that we were generating uh, revenue for the restaurants. Everyone was happy. But Jimmy wasn't interested in opening a couple of restaurants every year like other fast food chains. He had the advantage of being exclusively virtual, which led to an absolute insane level of growth. We've been signing like 50 to 70 uh, extra restaurants every week and adding 
them on. Right now, we're at 900 restaurants. Mr. Beast Burger then went global, opening 12 restaurants in Canada and 10 in the UK. On the 21st of February 2021, Mr. Beast would tweet out, Mr. Beast Burger has sold over 1 million sandwiches in under two months. An impressive number. However, when looking at the future of Mr. Beast Burger, a million sandwiches really only seems like the beginning. You know, at the rate we're going, by the end of the year, we could have like 1,500, 2,000 Beast Burger restaurants. Jimmy also explained that he planned on moving to physical restaurants. I also want to move into physical restaurants because I think that'd be really cool. Which might even include extra items on the menu. The experiment of Mr. Beast Burger was overall an uncertain one, but entrenched in that uncertainty was the equivalent potential for success. There seems to be an ever-present question of what is and isn't appropriate for a YouTuber to try outside of simply making videos, but sometimes the only way to answer that question is by taking a leap of faith and simply seeing how the audience might react. Thankfully, in Jimmy's situation, the unprecedented stab in the dark was met with success, support, and ultimate triumph, but was met with an equivalent degree of challenge, adversity, and difficulty.